Albany's Rock Station, Q103. What's going on? It is Candace. I am live at the Palace Theater in Albany right now. We have got a paranormal evening with Alice Cooper happening tonight. Sitting next to me is the great Nita Strauss. Hey, Nita, how's it going today? Oh, I'm so excited to be here. It's the first show of the tour. We're all pumped, excited. Uh, we're all sort of starting out a little tired, too. Oh, uh, I, but we, we work well under pressure like this. Right, you kind of got to get back into the swing of things, right? Totally. Yeah. Well, I feel like it's a, like a treat to get the first show of the tour because you get to see everything fresh and new before anybody else. And you guys are fresh and new, even if you're a little tired. Yeah, yeah. well, you know, it's, it's good to be at the beginning of the tour because we all like each other. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that we don't love each other all the time, but, you know, it's, it's nice to be at the beginning of the tour. We're fresh and excited and you know, toward the end, we've been doing the same show for you know for a while. We get a little, we get a little time. Right, you can get a little cranky. I can see, <laughs> I can see that. Um, you guys are on the road a lot, uh, of, a lot of time, um, and you are this predominantly like gentlemen with you guys on the road. Yeah. Does that weigh on you at all ever while you're on the tour? Oh, not at all. I mean, these guys are like my big brothers. You right. Know? Uh, and the great thing about this tour is it's such a positive environment. Uh, we're all so close. We're all such good friends. Uh, you know, there's no Me Too stories happening on yeah. our tour. You know, the, it's it's just like being in a band with your five big brothers. It's a blast. That's awesome. So you uh, have been with a, a couple of different bands. Um, the Iron Maidens, uh, obviously, was one of the big ones that people knew you from before you were with Alice Cooper. Right. And you spent a lot of time, like, learning other people's music. And how did you, A, end up in Alice Cooper's band? Uh -huh. <laughs> and B, how have you progressed since, since joining this? band. Wow, that's a really long two-part I know, right? I'm long sorry. <laughs> uh, so I started playing with Alice in 2014 um, when we were about to start the Motley Crue tour. They uh, they were looking for a new guitar player and it was actually Kip Winger that uh, put a good word in for me and said, hey, I know somebody great you should check out. So I'm internally grateful to Kip for that. And uh, so I started playing with him on the Motley Crue tour and uh, some, from then, you know, just carried on. We've been doing uh, about nine or ten months a year since then. So Alice is always on the road. And uh, I just recorded and completed my first solo record, Controlled Chaos, which is out November 16th on Sumerian Records. Yes. And I'm beyond excited. So that's like the been the biggest step in my evolution as a guitar player uh, to step out and do a solo project. Yeah, the new album we're really excited for. I mean, uh, first it was supposed to be like in September. I feel like it got pushed a couple of times. So uh, I'm excited to hear that. Uh, the single that came out originally was awesome. But you, it's all instrumental. There's no vocals on the album, right? Uh, how is, uh, you're a shredder, so we know that obviously there's going to be a, an amazing amount of guitar going on. But do you think it's going to be hard for listeners to do a whole album of just, just music without lyrics? Uh in some cases, I would think so, but what I really tried to do with Controlled Chaos was make an album that the average rock fan could listen to. So, like, yes, yeah, so there's a lot of notes being played, of course, right. <laughs> but, um, but I wanted to make a sort of like a gateway drug album into instrumental guitar music because the casual rock fan or metal fan might go like, oh, I don't want to listen to music without words. It's just one long guitar solo, but I wrote songs. You know, I wrote songs with a verse and a chorus and a bridge and a guitar solo section, you know, <laughs> a gi big, giant solo section. and. And um, I think the audience will really get that. They'll totally understand that. How has your time in uh, the Alice Cooper band influenced your, um, your solo work? Oh, immensely. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I learned from learning these songs is how to let the song breathe and how to let, you know, let the song sometimes rest, whereas I would normally just try to fit in as many notes as I could, you know, just, just say, like, this is what I can do, look at me, look at me. Right. And, uh, <laughs> and I learned how to actually let the song grow and progress and do its own thing, and, and I think that shows on my record a lot. Uh, Alice himself, has he given you, like, one monumental piece of advice that just, like, sticks with you at all times? I think, the, I don't know if it's, like, you know, a verbal piece of advice that I could say, but the biggest thing that I take away from being in a band with Alice is he is such a consummate professional. You know, he's 70 years old this year. I'm 31. You know, I'm yeah. less than half of his age, like, right. by, by a lot. And, uh, and 
if he can go on stage and put on the show that he puts on every single night, night after night after night, and just absolutely slay it, then nobody else has any excuses, you know. And to do the schedule that he does between, you know, our tour and the Hollywood Vampires and all his charity work and everything else that he does and always be as on as he is, uh, it's an inspiration to all of us that get to play in the band with him. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. I mean, you know, I, I do I do the radio thing. He sure. does shows at everything you just said, and he does it. he's on at nights here on the queue from 8 until midnight every night. He rocks the capital region. Um, we, when he is on the air, he likes to tell us some interesting stories. That man has a lot of stories, and he's a great oh, yeah. storyteller. Uh, have you ever heard any? Is there like one crazy story that you love to hear from Alice? Oh gosh, they're all great stories. Uh, that's a great, Al you know, like Alice always has a story. That's like <laughs> one thing I love about him. It's like. I can't even put my finger on like one great Alice story because every day meeting with Alice like is, hey, did you hear about this? And you know, whatever it is. So he's just, this, you're right, he's a great storyteller. Yeah. <laughs> Does he uh, throw down with the uh, cheesy dad jokes to you guys like on the regular? No, that's Chuck with the cheesy dad <laughs> Just had on, and uh, I don't know if you got See, I tried to ask him about it, and he was like, Oh, no, it's just oh, we call no. it uh, when we're, they do it when they're golfing or something. They no, said, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't golf with so yeah. I don't golf with them, so I don't know. But all I know is Chuck is the dad joke king for sure. He's you know, Chuck's band, Visto Blanco, is like really serious and mean and and like rad and heavy metal, but Chuck is like the dad joke king of all dad joke kings. Yes, do you like putting in your back pocket, throw them back at him ever? You know, sometimes he'll do the dad joke where he pretends to talk on a banana like it's a phone. Stop. <laughs> and, I'll, and I will do that one sometimes to, but to try to get a laugh out of him. But I never do it as convincingly as, as Chuck. You have to really commit to the dad joke. Yeah, know, yeah. it's not funny. No, I mean, they're not funny to begin with, to be <laughs> honest. <laughs> be done really well. So it's been um, literally almost two years to the day since you guys were here in the Capital Region. and was, uh -huh. right? And we played here. Played here, right? The same I, spot. I I saw my Facebook memory. Yeah, that me too. I was like, oh my God, it's <laughs> literally ago. almost to the day. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I love that it's around Halloween time always. Yeah. You know, Alice has always been into into the spooktacular. Um, was that something you were into before coming into this band? Or is it something that you have grown to be a part into? Oh, not even. Like, no? I don't like scary movies. I don't like scary rides. I don't like haunted houses. What? I don't like ghost adventures. Like, I don't, you know... I'm, I'm definitely like the minority in this band and this fan base because I just like, I, I'm really easily scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, we went to, my boyfriend Josh and I went to Halloween Horror Nights a couple years ago and he loves, you know, he loves the haunted hayrides yeah, and mazes yeah. and stuff. And he was, he was basic. I think he must have been tipping people or something, all the workers to come and scare me. <laughs> and I cried at Universal <laughs> Studios. Oh, no, stop. Oh, that's terrible. In my defense, I was overtired. Well, yeah, okay. Was, okay, I'll give you I that. I was overtired. We had just done four shows in a row with Alice, and we had done Jimmy Kimmel earlier that day, and I had a 5 a.m. flight to go up to Google to give a Google talk the following morning. So, you know, at 1 a.m. after that schedule, knowing that I had to be up in three hours, I was just, I just, I burst into tears at Universal City Walk. Yeah, I don't know how you juggle it between your workouts, your clinics, your music, and touring with Alice. Like, where do you find time for yourself? There is none. Uh, yeah. There is none. You know, but uh, but anytime I start to sort of feel sorry for myself, you know, because I do do seven days a week on this tour. Right, yeah. Um, I don't have, I literally don't have a day off until, it's it's October 4th right now. I don't have a day off until November 3rd. Wow. My next day off because I do five shows a week with Alice and then I do two clinics a week at Guitar Center. Uh, so it's a grueling schedule, but I just remind myself all the time that this is what I worked for all these years. You know, this is the thing that all these years as a guitar player, like you pray and hope and wish and work and practice to have an opportunity like this. So, you know, to say that, you know, to start turning things down or say, you know, I have a day off, I don't want to do a clinic or I don't want to do an in-store would be kind of ungrateful of me, I think. Right. Yeah, I could, I could understand that feeling. Okay. But, you know, you can do you. A day is okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> November 3rd. <laughs> And then I got a two, I, go, I get home on the the second. I've got November third off, and then I have to go to traffic court on the fourth. No, so that like, is the worst because you're I there for have, like hours. Oh God, I know. I have to go to traffic court on the fourth, and it's like my first, you know, my first week home in months. And I Always request a supporting meeting. deposition. That's what I learned. All right. I had to go to traffic court for the first time. <laughs> All right, I will do that. <laughs> that would that's their new equivalent of the cop didn't show up. You know okay. what I mean? I'm gonna put that down in my phone. 
<laughs> yeah, do that. I'm telling you. Um, so I, you know, you've been working on your solo stuff. The reboots have been a big thing in the movies and television lately. If you had an opportunity to score a reboot of any film or TV show, like theme song, which one would you pick? Power Rangers. Yes. Sure. Power Rangers is the shreddiest theme song, and uh, and I love that guitar I've been there. So if they ever did it, like a Power Rangers, and they've done little known fact among us adults. <laughs> The original Power Rangers song, theme song that everyone knows, like, yeah, that's an amazing shreddy song, but Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, Power Rangers Dino Thunder, like, they all have amazing theme songs, so I would love to do a Power Rangers theme. What's your favorite Power Ranger? You know, I, I was the Yellow Ranger as a kid yeah. because I didn't want to be one of the guys, but the, but the Pink Ranger was a little girly for me, so I was trainee. Yep. I get it. I get that. Well, Nina, thank you so much for giving us a couple minutes today. I know you uh, have to get on stage here in the near future. Um, Nita's solo album is coming out on the 16th of November called Controlled Chaos, so make sure you mark your calendar. Go pick that up. Of course, um, you can head back to the Palace Theater like right now and get some tickets and come join us tonight, a paranormal oh. evening with Alice Cooper going down. Nita, is there anything you'd like to add to the listeners of the Capital Region before we oh, let you get on your way? Just that the pre-orders for Controlled Chaos are live now. Uh, my website, NitaStrauss.com. <laughs> uh, we've got t-shirts, we've got posters, we've got vinyl pre-orders, a special Ooh. vinyl variant uh, for vinyl collectors. Uh, we've got a special red splatter vinyl, which is really rad looking. Uh, so if any vinyl collectors are interested, you guys can pick up the special variant there at NitaStrauss.com. And of course, you can all of us follow my social media. I'm Hurricane Nita everywhere. All right, Nita, thank you so much. Thank you.